This morning, inside your spotlight, we put a focus on Tobago, and I welcome Senator the Honorable Lawrence Hislop, the government senator, joining us on set this morning. Good morning Hi, to you, morning, sir. Good morning, How are you doing? So far, so good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Doing Thank good, you for man. waking up this early and joining us on the show for the nation. <laughs> We appreciate yeah. it because I know it's not always easy. It's not always easy. And I understand that you guys had a, a, an important meeting last evening. Yeah, we had um, the PNM in Tobago had a meeting on autonomy, push mm. for autonomy, mm -hmm. um, because we believe the conversation needs to be restarted. Um, the Prime Minister has given uh, several commitments uh, um, that we're going to restart that Conversation. Um, conversation in the parliament. It is currently at um, committee stage of the of the parliament of the whole. Mm -hmm. uh, so so we decided to restart the conversation in Tobago because because this concerns Tobago. But does it have any any change that will happen uh, to the documents at, at the committee stage with meetings like this happening still? No no no. When you like see it, it, what we're doing is just to resensitize our people, resensitize uh, Tobagonians about what is taking place. Right. The importance of it. Um, we, we don't know if any changes will happen at committee stage, but committee stage is where, is where amendments, minor adjustments can mm -hmm. be made. Right. Um, so once it comes back on, on, the, on the floor of the agenda, or the agenda, we expect that um, we would be ready. I know the PNM would be ready. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the votes on the government side would be ready to vote in favor of it. What was the, what was the feedback on the ground last night when people were I mean, sharing information and, and things like that? Uh, it, was, it was really good. Um, I think the meeting... Uh, as a whole was really conversational in context right. um, it was very educational we had the two MPs along with the minority councillor and um, Senator Dennis um, the political leader Tobago council um, and the two MPs really and truly laid a, 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 a platform laid a foundation mm -hmm. that was really educational eye-opening um, it reminded us and, and reminded Tobagonians as a whole as to how long this process has been ongoing I mean, um, since since 2007 and even before that. And I'm saying before yeah. that it was part of the conversation yeah, and yeah. it went on and, and it's been going back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, because we've moved from, from 1980 when the Tobago House of Assembly was re-established mm -hmm. um, to Act 40 of 1996 that gives the THA some sort of powers that it has now. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeking to do and what the government is seeking to do now uh, it's to even give Tobago greater autonomy, give Tobago um, what some may call self-governance, mm -hmm. um, because it now it will now create a, a, a platform that the Tobago House of Assembly can now really and truly create laws, because it will now become a true legislat uh, legislature where the president now becomes part of the process. Mm -hmm. Because now, if you have to create a, a, a localized law, a law for Tobago. Um, it's a, it's a Tobago House of Assembly bill that goes to cabinet. Right. And then cabinet um, makes a decision when they put it um, on the floor of the parliament for it to be debated and possibly become law. Mm -hmm. And so, so with that, it, it, with, the, with the advent of, of, of the passage of these two bills, it now gives the Tobago House of Assembly that level of autonomy that says, okay, we can look at a situation that is unique to Tobago, uh, pass a law, that is unique for Tobago. Let's take, for instance, the marine parks throughout Tobago. We have the Book Reef. We have um, reefs all over Tobago, Space Side, Culloden, um, that the THA can pass laws if these bills come into effect, can now pass laws to protect, to protect the reefs. those kind of um, environments and even localized laws right inside Scarborough and all of that. So then let me ask this, right? Mm. If it is that, the, that that is important, I don't mm. disagree at yeah. all, right? But then wouldn't that be, since it's important, if that's something that the THA proposes to central government, shouldn't it be easy to debate and put into law? <laughs> well, the thing about it is that, is that, is that this, this process has been, in one of the documents, they call it a protracted process. Mm -hmm. um, and so Tobago has, Tobago is, is, is synonymous with fight because the amount of times that Tobago has changed hands and the Belmana rats and so Tobago is synonymous with fighting for, for, for change, for, right. for, for process. And um, what is required is, is, the, is because it's a, a, a three-fourths three majority, the, the government doesn't have the majority to pass this because it's a constitutional reform bill because one of the bills speaks to 
amendments to the Constitution of Trinidad and Tobago. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the autonomy bill. Eh? Mm -hmm. I understand. I understand the challenges with the yeah. autonomy bill. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking about if it is that the the THA wants to pass a law, some things like what you mentioned, oh. the example that you gave, right? If they want to pass a law that protects the reefs around the island, um, I I struggle to find where a challenge would be in making a law like that applicable. Why it is you need autonomy to be able to make no, a law no, no. like that? So that was just an example because yeah. the truth is. It, it, the, the THA does not have lawmaking powers right now. Right. Um, the process is that that has to go through cabinet and then be debated right. within the national parliament. Right. Um, so it, 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 it's, a, it's a longer process for any lawmaking to take place for the So the idea process. is that you want a shortened process? Well, yeah, a streamlined process, which, which speaks to governance, which speaks to mm -hmm. your self-governance, understanding what's taking place in your environment and making the changes um, necessary for, for the better governance of the island. But to quote you, mm -hmm. Tobago Synonymous would fight. <laughs> so if it is <laughs> that you're telling me that Tobago Synonymous would fight, mm -hmm. but you want to have your own power to fight by yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you see, what, what, does, what, does, what does this mean for you as a person to self-actualize? Um, you, 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 you've, you've grown up over the years, and so you want to make those changes. Mm -hmm. As, as, as you fit. Now, Tobago wants to remain within the unitary state of Trinidad and Tobago. Right. But, but we have to understand that there are some unique cultural things that are Tobago. Right. And um, I, I've, I've always said this, and it was repeated last night as well, that we may never fully understand the struggle that is Tobago unless you live in Tobago. Mm. Okay. Yeah? okay. And, so, and so even though it is, it is within us, um, for that, if you look at the document, the, the document that comes out of the parliament, the document also speaks to Tobago feeling a sense of being marginalized. Right. Now, now, my perception, or perception could be my reality. It may not be the reality, but perception could be the reality. Mm -hmm. And so, and so this, this creates an avenue for Tobago to, to, to seek its long, long desire. <laughs> long, long desired uh, autonomy. autonomy. Yeah. All right. Do you do you think that at this stage that we're at right now, there's enough conversation happening between the THA and the central government? Well, hmm. the, you see, the, the, a process took place over over a period of time. You went through the, the the consultations in Tobago that was done by the the forum of of political parties, um, and this was this was all the political parties in Tobago, and this was being led or driven. By Mr. By Mr. Orville London, who's who just received his honorary doctorate from from UTT, mm -hmm. um, as well as one of the champions of Tobago, and, and I'm sure you've spoken to to, to Mr. Hucho Charles, the late Hucho Charles, over the years. Of course. And so this was this was a way for for all persons in, interested in pushing Tobago forward to come together. Mm -hmm. um, that went through a long process. The process went from from consultations. To, to, to THA bills being drafted, being sent to the cabinet. And the, the thing about it is that the current um, Prime Minister, Dr. Rowley, laid those bills in the House as they came from Tobago. Mm -hmm. there, were, there were no changes. The cabinet made no changes to them. They were placed in, in, the, in, in the parliament as they were sent from Tobago. A joint select, joint select committee was, was set up to look at that. Um, because you now bring the conversation national. Right. And so the Joint Select Committee, several consultations over the years, um, the bills were saved several times within the parliament from the 11th to the 12th. And, um, and now, and now we are, you, you, you have a situation where you have the opportunity for this to move even further. Right, but didn't didn't the um, the current chief secretary, before he was the mm -hmm. chief secretary, oppose some of the things that were in that autonomy bill? Well, <laughs> well you see, the thing about it, Rockers, is that you'll never get everything that you want. Right. And, and so even the bills that came from, from, from Tobago, from the THA, came at a, at, at a position that, at, at your best position. Right. Um, because you're negotiating, you, you, you're speaking to a national conversation now. You're not just speaking to, to Tobago mm -hmm. and, and what Tobago wants. You're speaking about Tobago being part of the national, of the, of the unitary state still. And, and so 
there may even be PNM persons within within the governance structure who may not agree fully with what's in the legislation, but understand that legislation legislation is a living, breathing document. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not comfortable with Act 40 of 1996, because the, the, the Chief Secretary isn't comfortable with the limited powers that Act 40 of 1996 has. Right. And so if you're not comfortable there, and you're having an opportunity now to move to something that gives you more power, gives you additional power, the question I ask all the time is why, what's the problem with accepting where we are where we'll be going? Why accept? Why not accept where we are going mm -hmm. if you are not comfortable with where you are? Right. But my, my question was more on a general standpoint. Yeah. I understand the autonomy aspect of it, mm -hmm. uh, but in a general co uh, con concept, do, do the, does the central government and the THA have enough conversation? Because I often hear uh, differing perspectives. I often it often seems like there's a lot of uh, tension between right. the central government and the THA. Uh, from your standpoint, am I, am I incorrect? In well, the thing thing about that is that I need to sit in the... <laughs> <laughs> we sit on the Senate, so I mean, you sit in the central government, yeah, but, more or less. Well, well, you see, I, I, if, I, if I could remember clearly, mm -hmm. when, when the new administration came into office in Tobago, um, Dr. Rowley made it his business to create an avenue for conversation. Mm -hmm. um, in, in some regard, some persons may say that, that he was more accommodating of this current administration and even the administrations before. Right. And I believe the rationale behind that with Dr. Rowley is that he understood that it was a young group of persons coming in who didn't have the necessary experience in governance. And so he took the initiative by taking senior cabinet members to Tobago mm -hmm. to have conversations with the, with, with, with the administration. Um, that descended very quickly, quickly yeah, yeah. into into. Um, into fight. Into, into fight. <laughs> and, and to me, Rockers, I think it's, it was unnecessary fight. Right. Um, because the, the, the Prime Minister created that avenue for conversation, for dialogue. And um, to me, there was no need. There was no need for the fight. Because, because, because the, the Prime Minister has had, had this mantra that if Tobago wins, the country wins. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't an issue now. The elections were over. And, and so it was time... The for the governance of the island. And who sat in the seat, even though it was, was not the party that you are a member of, it was about governance. And it mm -hmm. was about governance of the island. It was about the governance of Trinidad and Tobago. And so if, if Tobago wins in terms of the governance, then the, the country wins. But I find oftentimes when, you, when we talk politics, mm -hmm. it... it, it we don't have that governance conversation very mm. often, right? It tends to stay very much party, party, right. party, even when one party wins. So, for example, how we have central government being one party and the THA being a different party, mm. we still see that tension based on party, not based on, on government policies, not based on even the autonomy bill even. Mm. It's just based on personal conflict of parties. How do we resolve that? Because that seems to be the order of politics today. Well, I, I, I have seen... From the perspective that I look at, I have seen that Dr. Rowley's method of operating within the governance structure of Trinidad and Tobago has always been, let's put the country first. Let's do what is best for the country. Um, and and, and if, you, if, you, if you operate within that space, then, then I don't see an issue. I, I don't see that there will be a challenge. Um, it, persons are... And you're right. There, there are persons who get within their own their own their own heads, and and see things from a personal standpoint and a and a, and a party standpoint first. Um, but I would say, without fear of, of contradiction, that that P and M governments in the past and even currently, the mantra has always been: we're going to do what is best for the country, even if the decision may not be may not be a popular decision. May not be a favorable yeah. one. So in saying so, doing what's best for the country and all that, mm -hmm. do you think that there was enough allocation when it comes to the budget for Tobago for 2025? <laughs> the thing about that is nobody is comfortable with the allocation that they receive. Right, but was there enough? But there's in, it's, so, so the issue here is not about whether it is enough or not, Rockers. It's about what you, it's about what you do with what you get. Right. Because 
Every ministry wants to get more. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here equating the Tobago's of Assembly to a ministry. But I want But at this point, it, it more or less is the same no, thing. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's really not. Um, because the governance structure is completely different. Right. Um, the Tobago's of Assembly is responsible for things that that regional corporations aren't responsible for. So okay. you're talking about education and health and um, all the road infrastructure in Tobago and all the physical infrastructure in Tobago is, is the responsibility of the THA. Um, sports and, and, and community development, all these things fall under the Tobago House of Assembly. And so the THA has never had enough. All right. Has never had enough over the years. So this is not a this is not a no situation. Has never had enough. But, but what, like you say, no ministry has ever had enough. Well, Everybody well, wants a little well, bit more. Right. Yeah. Uh, but what but what the Tobago House of Assembly has been able to do over the years, and if we even if we go all the way back to to when Mr. Charles was 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 Chief Secretary, even with the the, the, the small amount that he received, he was still able to do significant infrastructural works on in the mm -hmm. island. Um, he was even one of the persons that started um, the scholarship, uh, a scholarship program for Tobagoonians to go to St. George's to study medicine and so mm -hmm. on. Um, and then after he fought dispute resolution committee and all of those things, additional funding came via the, the, the band of 4.03 to 6.8%. Um, and Mr. London benefited from that and, and ramped up the development of Tobago significantly during his, his, his tenure as Chief Secretary. Mm -hmm. And that continued. What we see now is that even though this administration has received more allocations, or their allocations are larger than the previous Tobago House of Assembly administration, they are not ruling out initiatives and doing the type of work that is expected in Tobago. Um, I, there, there's, there's several... There's several Mismanagements and 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 it's it's very popular in Tobago that this administration spends a lot of money on travel. Mm. Um, I heard you mention in the Tobago updates interview that they spend five million dollars in one year in one travel. Year. But I, I want to, to just jump back to I mean one of the one of the significant milestones that mm -hmm. they've been able to achieve is the is the reinvigoration of Tobago Carnival. Uh, yeah. Since they came back in, they made it a point that they wanted to be able to do this as a tourism initiative, yeah. as an economy driving initiative. Um, would you say they have been successful so far? No, well, I, I would say that the last this year, mm -hmm. um, by, 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 by way of what all the stakeholders are saying, mm -hmm. this year that the carnival was a success. Right. I'm not a carnival person. I'm but, so sorry to hear that. It it's all right. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's all right. But looking on from, from the outside, you've seen an increase in the visitor arrivals and right. so on to the island. Um, but the conversation, as I shared at another program is how do you really count the success mm -hmm. and and who really benefited from the success right um because i mean I, so far we've seen we've seen the hotels we've right. seen the the guest houses yeah. the villas uh of course the, the carnival bands on the road yeah. the the bars all around we, but the question is how many of those bands were really tobago based carnival bands from my, from what I know about uh, them, the majority of them, the majority were, of them, were, the majority of them, right. were, they might have partnered with people from Trinidad right. as well, but the majority of the stakeholders, of the main stakeholders, were actually Tobago. But, but the thing about it is that that was a, that was a conversation we were having from day one, from right. the jump of the carnival, because right. we were saying from year one, you have an entity called NCC that that has done carnival mm -hmm. with Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we said from the inception partner with 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 trinidad mm -hmm. um but that was that was there was significant pushback it, well yeah, yeah. I, I mean in, in all honesty I, I would be hesitant as well because but I why would, would you be hesitant to, because as much as as much as they have the experience in doing it they have the experience in doing it a particular way and like you mentioned earlier there are little cultural differences that would be at play right but the thing about it is that even if even if it is your your product may be different mm -hmm. Everything that happens in the back is 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 basically the same. Well, no, because, because of logistics if you, if you, and, and if you do the same thing, then you have the same product. No, no. no. What we're we talking <laughs> about, what we're talking about, is is logistics as it relates to planning and, right. and that sort of thing. Right. The product, the product is 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 different. But mm -hmm. what happens behind the scenes? Would be the same sort sort sort, sort of thing with the logistics and so on. Yeah, and I, I mean I know that from since year one there were there were Trinbegonians, Trinidad, Trinidadians who were having an influence in terms of helping or consulting right. when it comes to mm -hmm. to that. So I mean it have been an official partnership with the NCC, but I know that there were definitely conversations happening behind the scenes with logistics and things of that nature, and we see it now coming to fruition in year three, mm -hmm. whereby. Um, 
like you like you said, the stakeholders are saying this was a successful carnival. Yeah, yeah. And in any business venture, I think three three times around, three years, three months, or whatever, the, the magic number is always three. But if you if you if you could partner from year one to make your business successful. But there's no guarantee of that, is there? <laughs> but, ah, <laughs> but, uh -huh. but but you see, but you see, even if there's no guarantee, Ruckus, there is always a greater possibility that you'll succeed. Because you would have had you would have had the experience of those yeah. who would have gone before. Oh, uh, I mean, mean so far, I think it's been it's been going smoothly. No, no, um, no, I'm happy. I, I, I give them kudos yeah. for that. We, 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 of course, still have other things to discuss when it comes to what else is being managed and the yeah. other things that are being rolled out. Unfortunately, though, we are out of time this All morning. Right. <laughs> All right, time flies when you're having fun. But I thank you so very much for joining us no, this morning, Senator, no problem, no to have problem. this conversation. And I look forward to having you back again to continue. Anytime, right. anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, we take a quick break and come back with more. Senator Lawrence Hislop, government senator, uh, chatting with us this morning about some Tobago issues. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Devil does try, but he does never learn.